What are deletions in NLP? Hey everyone, Mike Sweet here from MikeSweet.co.uk, giving the edge in life and business with NLP and psychology. Now, Yay! It's time for a cheer because this is the last section of the Metal Model and taking a, a whistle-stop tour through the, the, the different sections of the Metal Model. And today is about deletions and deletions are broken up into three separate areas within this video and on the podcast and on the blog. And they are nominalizations, unspecified verbs and also simple deletions. As with all of the meta model, the idea of these questions is when you hear these violations, is to stop in your tracks. It should send off a little alarm in your mind whenever you heard a nominalization or a cause and effect or an unspecified referential index or whatever it is. And it lets you know that something within that person's map, they, they are generalizing, distorting or deleting. So this key piece, this deletion piece is a biggie, uh, as with all of it. And remember, you're not supposed to learn this by watching me for 10 or 12 minutes. This is tough stuff. So so even for me, the reason why I'm cheering now, you know, I've done this stuff for years, but I'm cheering now thinking, you know, I'm bringing this stuff and making this conscious again. So something that's over the years has become uh, unconsciously competent to bring it to the fourth and to make it conscious again is a, is a tough gig. <laughs> so don't expect it to be an easy ride. And if this is one of your first NLP videos, stop and go back and rewind because this is something that's more advanced, but definitely worth taking a deep dive into. So I've already done a video on nominalizations, but let's just keep it all in context, or context because nominalizations fit here. A nominalization is when people uh, mention, uh, sorry, have a process and then they freeze it in time. So they, they, they create a noun from what could be a verb. And it's our job to reverbify that noun. So when someone says that they, they have depression, it sounds very much like a tangible thing. They have depression, but actually you can't see it. So when someone says that um, our relationship broke down because we've got bad communication, you see communication sounds very much like a block, sounds like they have bad communication. But one of the old uh, NLP tests for nominalizations is, can you put it in a wheelbarrow? Um, which is quite strange. I don't know the last time I put anything in a wheelbarrow. But hey, that's, that's what you'll read and you'll hear everywhere. But for me, whenever I hear these nominalizations, they are, they are really obvious. It's something that I've really connected to as a coach and as a therapist because when people connect or they, they take the process out and create a noun and then own that noun as if they have it, like having depression, you know, it, you hear that all the time, and it's and it's and it's fine to say. However, how does that person then suddenly not have it? You know, how do they how do they lose it? Do they ever forget to take it to work? Because having something almost presupposes, you know, I have a tattoo, or I have a mole, or I have three legs, or I have twelve toes, or something. There's, an, there's a huge element of that of stuckness. And your job as a coach, as a therapist, as a manager, but remember not as a parent, not as a lover, not as a father, not as a husband, because you will fall out with people using this stuff. <laughs> so your job is to help people recognize in a very subtle way that perhaps these things that they see as stuck things are actually processes. So let's look at some examples. So the first one is I have depression. Very common, you'll hear it all the time, but when someone says I have depression, depression is that piece that's the nominalization. So a challenge to that could be, so, so how do you depress yourself? Now, you could never get away with saying that generally in a, in a first coaching session or a therapy session. You need some rapport to help people understand because that sounds like a complete disconnect that you just do not understand them. However, conversationally, when you break that down, you know, so, so tell, me about, tell me about this depression we've got away from your. So how, you know, how do you depress yourself? Because people do it in different ways. Again, you see you've got a thing that's turned into a process. And when people can start to realize that so much of it is within their control or so much of it is within in their behavior, their beliefs, their attitudes, they can really begin to break that down. Because if it's something they are doing rather than have, they can stop doing it, but they can't lose it. So I hope that makes sense. You know, so the, the same thing is that, you know, uh, my marriage is failing. You know, what does marriage mean to you? What is a marriage? And let people, un let people break into the, the next kind of narrative. Well, a marriage is about, you know, when two people coming together and, and, uh, and we, um, you know, we connect and we, you know, we share things and we break down. See, there's a whole other list of nominalizations and generalizations and deletions within that for you to go with. But when you hear these initial nominalizations, um, so that sounds like that 
uh, that it that it's very it's very, it's very uh, factual. Something is something is hap actually happening, and let them know it's a process rather than it's the end of the line. Again, you'll hear these, and it's a case for you to grab them, run with them, and see where you can help people with them. Let's look at another one. My anxiety. Anxiety is crippling. What do you specifically mean by anxiety? Is a great way to challenge that. Because they can say, well, it's, it's a feeling that I get, you know, how often do you get this feeling? Okay, well, it's generally around, and what you'll then do, you'll be able to isolate perhaps certain examples or certain times. So this person has got my anxiety to at the times that I feel anxious. It's really freeing when you can turn these, uh, these nouns, these things, into verbs, which is, a, which is doing, which is a process term. So I hope you, hope you get that. And again, there's another video on this, normalizations in NLP, uh, within the free NLP course and within on YouTube, so check those out too. So the next one is an unspecified verb. These are things like uh, tried, is, and what that means is it's, it doesn't define kind of how much someone tried. Um, so, you know, listen out for these unspecified verbs, you know, tried in what way? Um, how specifically have you tried to so listen out for these uh, unspecified verbs? Because again, they're a great place for you to take a deep dive in to find out what's really happening. And as we're talking about deletions, it's obvious to cover simple deletions. And these are things when you just can tell that within the statement, uh, before you go into nodding dog syndrome and start to agree with the statement, listen to, to what's actually been given. So if someone says, I love this. Love what specifically? <laughs> <laughs> loving what kind of love is that love? Love in what way? There's there's lots of things missing in that, but the key thing is, you know, if someone says I love this, love what specifically? And you'll never understand. Is a great one. Understand what? <laughs> so you know, we'll hear these comments. They're very flippant, and we just will generally agree with them as generalizations, unless someone's uh, trained in the meta model or an NLP. So really begin to to take a, a deep dive in and get listening. Okay, we're down to the last two now. This one's unspecified referential index. Ah, talk about a crazy word. And what this means is when we're talking about kind of the, the proverbial we or they or um, categorizing people like um, Australians or the Brits or the Americans or the Koreans or whatever it is, generally it's, a spec it's, a, it's unspecified referential index, which people specifically. So they say that this is one of the easiest ones to learn. <laughs> Who are they specifically? So we, you know, we listen out from. They're very influential to use from the from a from a Milton model angle, from a meta model angle. Whenever you hear these um, unspecified referential index, you know you know you've got something. You know, who says which people specifically is a really good way to challenge these. And lastly, within the meta model under under deletions, we have comparative deletions, things that are compared to something that that you've deleted what it's compared to. You know, my training is the best. <laughs> better than who? You know, my training's better. My diet is far faster. Faster than what? Specifically. How do you know? <laughs> it's another great one. Um, and they might well know, and they might well be factual, but just kind of listen for these, because generally when people compare something to something else, it's a great way for people to get themselves in a, in a pickle or actually create an excuse around why they haven't achieved um, then, then listen out for these comparative deletions. Because comparative deletions are much bigger than others. What others specifically? <laughs> you see, we'll let them go and we won't necessarily jump on them, but these are everywhere, generally. So, hope you enjoyed that quick video on the last piece of the meta model. I know it's been a whistle-stop tour, and again, as I say, don't expect to learn this stuff by watching me, listening to me, reading blogs. It's about reading and taking as much as you can and go out and practice. So grab small chunks, whether it's comparative deletions for three or four days, make it conscious, get listening for them. Whether it's uh, unspecified verbs and just listen out for these, these ones and begin to challenge them, or whether it's universal quantifiers or nominalizations, um, listen out for them, plan it in your you know, kind of document what you want to start listening for, set your reticular activating system to start noticing and helping you out on that, and then you can become a master and using it. Uh, unconscious or consciously first, then unconsciously, which will ultimately make you more effective.
Remember, if you'd like to learn this stuff a bit more deeply with a bit more order, head over to mikesweet.co.uk forward slash free NLP for a 30 day free NLP course sent directly to your email box. An email a day, take you 10 minutes to go through watching videos, reading blog posts, and getting a more of a deeper understanding in a more succinct way of NLP and psychology. Head over there now. Until next time, bye for now.